Hi there. Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my techniques and tips on how I achieve drawing eyes. Be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be doing a real time video so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, the first thing that I do when I do a drawing is to do a center point on my board I'm working on and a center point on the reference image and then I work outwards from there which will ensure that the actual drawing will be in the center of the board. Now I'm using the freehand method here so I'm just using the pencil horizontally and vertically to measure. If you haven't checked out my video, Three Ways How to Draw the Outline, please do so. It'll give a more in-depth look at how I do the outline, freestyle, the grid, or cross-reference. So please take a look at that at the end of the video. Right, here's a selection of pencils I'm using, just the basic primary colours, using the Carbothellos and Conti Iparis, because they're chalkier, and they will actually fill in the tooth of the board, which makes the subsequent layers more easy to put on. Now the first layer is just basically just getting everything mapped out, um, just getting everything in balance, changing the drawing as you go as well, um, if it needs to be changed. It's laying the foundations for when we actually put the richer colours on, which is the Karen Ash ones, such as these here. This is my uh, second layer I'm going to put on now, so the, the more vibrant colours. Right, what I tend to do first is get the lighter colours in and the darker colours in, and then it gives you more of an idea then with the colours in between, so it helps with the values. Now the base colour for the white of the eye, I tend to use blue and orange. It's a really nice combination because you get some nice greys with that. Now to help find the values within the drawing, it's always a good idea to put a scale above. I use the nine value system, which is four lights, four darks and a mid-tone. So basically you're trying to get the tones the same as the value scale. Right, laying in these rich colours now, which is going to shine through the last stage, which is the glazing over stage, which I'll show you later. But what you have to do is try and get the correct colour by mixing um, on the actual board. Uh, it's very hard to find a pencil which is exact, so you have to sort of have a combination, sometimes three or four different pencils to get the shade you want. So it's just a case of playing about and trying different things. Now it can get a little bit overwhelming with all the actual detail in the iris, so it's just a case of just relaxing, just enjoying the process, just let it happen. The more you relax, the more you let go of the mind and open the heart, you'll find that the details just happen by its themselves rather than overthinking and trying to, to do it. It's just a matter of just letting go and just letting it flow from you really. Now, 
the easiest way I've found to sharpen your pencils is to use a snap off blade and then use your thumb behind the blade and just push through, cutting through the wood. Once you've done that, it's just the pastel part of the pencil there, just chafer it to a point and then you're good to go. Right, here's some real time footage now just to show you how I achieve the details in the iris using the combination of orange and blue. Now the reason I'm doing that is, is because blue and orange are complementary to each other. So if the blue is too vibrant, you can calm it down by putting orange to it. Or if you're wanting it dark, you can actually do the same by adding more pigment. So it's a case of really just putting a light pressure, you're not really pressing on very much at all here. I mean I'm using the pencils sometimes to glaze over, sometimes to put deep colour in. So it's a case of varying the pressure of the pencil uh, to get the desired results. If you are finding value in this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free. Then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Right, here's a selection of candy ash pencils, which are very rich and vibrant. I'll be using for the flesh tone soon. Just giving you an idea of what I'll be using in the combination with the basic red, blue and yellow of my um, primary colours I tend to use. Right, before I start with the flesh tones, I'm just going to show you here how I do the details in the whites of the eye. I mean that is a vein I'm actually going to put in uh, which will be red but instead of putting red I'm using blue to map out where it goes because if I use red and I make a mistake and need to erase it it will cause problems it will make a discolored of the color underneath so I'm using a color that I've used before in the white so then it's easily changed. You can see I'm changing it here. Right, just, just finalising the actual details in the white before I go over that with the red for the vein. Uh, there's quite a few little subtle veins that are not red, but this sort of... It's, it's, it's a nice colour, it's sort of like a mauvey colour. So I'm putting those in. Uh, and now I'm here, you can see now I'm going over with the red of that blue. I put a blue vein in first. So now I'm going over it, so I've got something to follow, you see now. Now to keep that point pretty sharp, you can keep turning the tip of the pencil. You'll see the pencil slightly turn now and again when I'm using it. Just moving it through your fingers just to get a new edge. Now if you do make a mistake, you can actually just use a kneaded razor and just dab it very lightly it'll pull off that pigment and then you can try and uh, disguise that then right 
Right, for the base coat, basically I'm using the primary colours again with the uh, Carbothello and Conti de Paris chalkier pencils before I go over them later with the Caran d'Arche pencils. So we're just mapping everything out and now uh, before I go into putting the rich colours in the flesh colour I tend to map out now the eyelashes using blue rather than going straight in with black because obviously blue is a part of a primary colour so you can easily change that if you make a mistake but if you use black straight away when you try and change that it just makes everything grubby it makes all the skin tone you've done underneath grubby so I recommend really going through using the blue first be happy where everything is before you know sort of starting with the black over it I'm just using my blue and yellow and a secondary colour of green just to get the subtleties of this flesh colour in between the eyelashes there. Now getting some rich colour in now before I start with the blues uh, mapping out the eyelashes just to give you an idea again how the procedure is and then you're going over with the darker blue over the light blue and then really basically getting everything sort of sculpture together using the primary colours as well over top of these rich Caran ash colours just to get the structure and everything underneath the eyelashes before then you go over with the black as you see here I'd recommend keep checking your image through the reflection of a mirror because it actually brings out imperfections you don't really normally see um, so it's always a good idea now and again to just pull the mirror out and have a look when you're actually doing the final touches it's best to keep an open view of the image you're working from and try and feel the whole thing uh, so you're here and there doing little bits just getting everything balanced up and getting the feeling right right here's the finished drawing at the correct angle as I saw it thank you for watching the video right through to the end if you found value in it and you like the video please give it a thumbs up appreciate it, it would help the channel Leave a comment and a message in the comments below. Uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce. I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on. And to subscribe, click on the circle here. It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much. Take care and be well.